live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2017. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to theCUBE on day three of our continuing coverage of VMworld 2017. I'm Lisa Martin, my co-host for this segment is John Troyer and we're excited to be joined by Rob Young, who is a CUBE alumni and the manager of product and strategy at Red Hat. Welcome back to theCUBE, Rob. Thanks Lisa, it's great to be here. So Red Hat and VMware, you've, you've got a lot of customers in common. I imagine you've been to many, many VMworlds. What are you hearing from some of the folks that you're talking to uh, on, uh, during the show this week? So a lot of the uh, interest that we're seeing is uh, how Red Hat can help customers, VMware or, or otherwise, uh, continue to maintain mode one applications, legacy applications, while planning for mode two, uh, more cloud-based deployments. And we're seeing a, a, a large interest in, in open source technologies and how that model could work for them to lower costs, to innovate more quickly, deliver things in a more agile way. So there's a, a mixture of, of messages that we're getting, but uh, we're receiving them loud and clear. Excellent, you guys have a big investment in OpenStack. Yes we do, and even back in the early days when OpenStack was, was struggling as a technology, uh, we recognized that uh, it was a, an enabler for uh, customers, partners, uh, large enterprises that wanted to uh, create, maintain their own private clouds, or even to have a, a hybrid cloud environment where they maintained and, and managed, controlled uh, some aspect of it while having some on a, uh, some of the workloads on a public cloud environment as well. So Red Hat has invested heavily uh, in OpenStack to this point. We're now in our 11th version of Red Hat OpenStack platform and we continue to, to lead that market uh, as far as um, you know, OpenStack development, innovation, and contributions. Uh, Rob, we were with theCUBE uh, at the last OpenStack Summit in Boston. Uh, big Red Hat presence there, obviously. I was very impressed uh, at the maturity of the OpenStack market and community. I mean, we're past the hype cycle now, right? We're down to real people, real uses, real people using it. A lot of very people with a, a, a strong uh, business critical investment in OpenStack in many different use cases. Can you kind of give us a picture of the state of the OpenStack market and user base now that we're, we are past that hype cycle? So I think what, you're, uh, what we're witnessing now in the market is that there's a thirst for OpenStack. One, because it's a, it's a very efficient architecture. It's very extensible. Uh, there's a, a tremendous ecosystem around the Red Hat distribution of OpenStack. And what we're seeing from enterprises, uh, specifically in the telco industry, is that they see OpenStack as a way to uh, lower their cost, raise their margins in a very competitive environment. So anywhere you see uh, uh, an industry or a vertical where there's uh, very heavy comp competition for customers and, and eyeballs, that type of thing. Uh, OpenStack is, is going to play a role in, if it's not already doing so, it's going to uh, be there at some point because of the, uh, ability, the simplification of what was once complex, but also in the cost savings can be realized by managing your own cloud within a hybrid cloud environment. You mentioned telco um, and specifically OpenStack kind of value for companies that need to compete for customers. Besides telco, what other industries are, uh, are really kind of prime for embracing OpenStack technologies? So we're seeing it uh, across you know, many industries, but uh, finance and banking, uh, healthcare, uh, public sector, anywhere where there's a, an emphasis on the move to open source and to open compute environments, open APIs, uh, we're seeing a, a tremendous growth in traction. And because Red Hat has been the leader in Linux, uh, many of these same customers uh, who trust us for Red Hat Enterprise Linux are now looking to us for the very same reason uh, on OpenStack platform because we, much like we have done with Enterprise Linux, we have adopted a, an upstream community-driven project. We have made it safe to use uh, within an environment in an enterprise way, in a supported way as well, via subscription. So, you know, many industries, many verticals, uh, we expect to see more, but primary use cases, uh, NFE and telco, healthcare, banking, uh, public sector, are among the, the, the top dogs out there. Is there, is there a customer uh, story that kind of stands out in your mind as really a hallmark to, to, that showcases the success of working with Red Hat and OpenStack? 
Well, there are, are many customers, there are many partners uh, that we have out there that we work with, but I would say if you look at some of the, the four, four out of the five large telcos, uh, Orange, Ericsson, uh, Nokia, uh, others that, that we've recently done business with would be uh, really good examples of not only customer use cases, but how they're using OpenStack to enable their customers uh, to have better experience with their cell networks, with their billing, with their availability, that type of thing. And we had uh, two press announcements that came out in, in May. Uh, one is an educational institution of a consortium of a, a very uh, high profile Northeast uh, learning institutions, public institutions that are now standardized on OpenStack and that are contributing. And we've also got uh, Oak Ridge, um, forgive me, I, it, it escapes me, but uh, there's a case study out there on, on the Red Hat website that uh, was posted on May the 8th that uh, depicts how uh, they're using our, our product and how others could do the same. Rob, uh, switching over a little bit to, to talking a little bit more about the, the, the tech and the, the how, um, you know, how the levers get pulled, right? We're talking about cloud, right? It, another term, past the hype cycle, right? It's a, it's a reality. But yep. when you're talking about cloud, you're talking about scale. Yes. Uh, can you, uh, we mentioned Linux, uh, OpenStack, and, and Red Hat, you know, kind of built on a foundation of Linux, super solid, super huge community, super rich, super long history. But can you talk about scale up, scale out, uh, data center, public cloud, private, how are, peop how are you seeing enterprises and uh, of, of various sizes uh, address the scale problem and using uh, technologies li like the Red Hat cloud stack to, uh, to address that? So there's uh, a couple of things, there's many aspects of that question, but what we have seen from OpenStack is when we first got involved with the project, it was very much bounded by the number of servers that you needed to deploy uh, an OpenStack uh, infrastructure on. What Red Hat has done, or what we've done as a company, is we, we looked at the components and we have unshackled them from each other so that you can scale individual storage, individual networking, individual high availability uh, on the number of servers that best fit uh, your needs. So if you want to have a very large footprint with uh, you know, many nodes of storage, you can do that. If you want to scale that just when uh, peak season hits, you can do that as well. But we have led the community efforts to deshackle the dependencies uh, between components. So, from that aspect, we have scaled the technology. Now, scaling operational capabilities and skill sets as well. We've also uh, led the effort to uh, create open APIs for management tools. Uh, we've created uh, communities around the different components of, of OpenStack and other open source technologies. Automation, automation a big part of that automation as well, Automation right? as well, so if you look at Ansible as an example, Red Hat has a major stake in Ansible, uh, and it is predominantly the uh, management scripting language of, of, of choice, or the management platform of choice, so uh, we have baked that into our products. We've made it very simple for customers to not only deploy things like OpenStack, but OpenShift, uh, CloudForms, other management capabilities that we have but we've also added APIs to these products so that even if you choose not to use a Red Hat solution, you can easily plug in a third party solution or a homegrown solution into our framework or our stack so that you can use our tool set, single pane of glass, to manage it all. So, so, so with that, can you tell us a little bit about the partner ecosystem and, that Red Hat has and what you've done, sounds like, to expand that to make your customers successful in open stack? Deployments. Absolutely, so as you're aware, uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, we uh, certify most of the hardware, or all of the hardware OEMs on Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Uh, we have a tremendous ecosystem around uh, Enterprise Linux. For OpenStack, this is probably one of the most exciting aspects of Red Hat right now. If you look at the ecosystem and the partners uh, that are just around OpenStack on its own, it's we've got, you know, a, an entire catalog of, of hundreds of partners, some at a deeper level than others, you know, integration-wise, business-wise, whatever, but uh, the ecosystem is, is growing and it's not because of Red Hat's efforts. We have customers uh, and partners that are coming to us saying, we need a storage solution. We're using you know, NetApp as an example. You need to figure out a way to integrate with these guys and certify it, make sure that it's something that we've already invested in, it's going to work with your product as well as it works with our legacy stuff. So 
The ecosystem around OpenStack is, is growing. We're also looking at uh, growing the ecosystem around OpenShift, around Red Hat, uh, Red Hat virtualization as well. So I think you'll see a, a tremendous amount of overlap in those ecosystems as well, which is a great thing for us. You know, the synergies are there, and I just think it's only going to help us multiply uh, you know, our efforts in the market. Go ahead, John. <laughs> oh, uh Rob, I'm talking again partnerships, I've always been intrigued at the role of open source, upstream, the open source community, yep. and the role of the people that take that open source uh, and then package it and for customers and do the training and enablement. So can you talk maybe a little bit about some of the open source partners and maybe how the role of Red Hat in translating all that upstream code into a product that is integrated and has training and is available for consumption from the IT side. Sure, so at Red Hat we partner not only with open source community members but, uh, and providers, but also with proprietary. So you know, I just want to make sure uh, everybody understands we're not exclusive to who we partner with. Uh, upstream, we look for partners that have the open source spirit in mind. So everything that they're doing that they're asking us to either consider as a component within our solution or to integrate with, we want to make sure that they're, they're to the letter of the law, you know, contributing their code back and there's no hooks or strings attached. Really the value comes in, you know, are they uh, providing value to their customers with the contribution and also to our combined customers? And what we're seeing uh, in our partnerships is that Many of our partners, uh, even proprietary partners like Microsoft, as an example, are looking at open source in a different way and they're providing open source options for their customers and subscription-based, consum uh, consumption-based models as well. So we hope that we're having uh, a positive impact in that way because if you look at our industry, it's really headed towards the open source, open API, open model and the proprietary model still has a place in time, I believe, but I think it's going to diminish over time and open source is going to be just the way people do business together. One of the things that, that you were talking about kind of reminded me of one of the things Michael Dell said yesterday during the keynote with Pat Gelsinger and that was about innovation and that you really got at companies to be successful need to be innovating with their customers and it sounds like that's definitely one of the core elements of what you're doing with customers, you said customers and partners are bringing us together to really drive that innovation. Yeah, and I, I couldn't agree more, and it's an honor to be mentioned in the same breath as Michael Dell, by the <laughs> way. But uh, what we see is, uh, because of the open source model, you can release early and often, and you can fail early, and what that does is encourage innovation. So it's not only corporations like Red Hat that are contributing to uh, you know, upstream projects, OpenStack as an example, or Linux as an example, or KVM as an example. Uh, there's also uh, college students. There's people uh, out there who work for Bank of America uh, across the fruited plains all over the world. And the one thing that unites us is this ability to recognize the value of our contributions to an open source community. And we think that that really helps with agile development, agile delivery, and if you look at our uh, project deliveries for OpenStack as an example, uh, OpenStack releases a major version of its product every six months. And because of uh, contributions that we get from our community, we're able to release our, and testing, it's not just, uh, contributions come in many forms, uh, testing is a huge part of that. Because of the testing we get from a worldwide community, we're able to release shortly after a major version of upstream OpenStack because of that innovation. In a pure waterfall model, it's not even possible. In an open source model, it's just the way of life. So, so as we're kind of wrapping up VMworld day three, what are some of the key takeaways for you personally from the event and from, uh, that Red Hat has observed in uh, the last couple of days here in Las Vegas? So there's a couple of observations that, you know, that have kind of been burned into my brain. <laughs> One is, uh, we believe at Red Hat, our opinion is that virtualization as a model will, will remain core, not only to uh, legacy applications, mode one, but also to mode two. And the, the trend that we see in the model that we see is that for mode two, virtualization is going to be a commodity feature. It, people are going to expect it to be baked into the operating system or into the infrastructure that they're running the operating system or their applications on. Um, so we see that trend, and we've suspected it, but coming to VMworld this week helped confirm that. And 
I say that because of the folks I've talked to uh, after sessions, at dinner, uh, in the uh, partner pavilion. Uh, so I really see that as a trend. The other thing I see is that there's a tremendous thirst within the VMware customer base to learn more about open source and learn more about how they can you know, leverage some of this, not only to lower their total cost of ownership and not to replace VMware, but how they can complement what they've already invested in with you know, faster, more agile based mode two development. And that's where we see the market you know, from a Red Hat standpoint. Excellent, well there's a great uh, TEI study that you guys did recently, um, total economic impact on virtualization that folks can find on the website. And Rob, we thank you for sticking around and sharing some of your insights and, and innovations that Red Hat is pioneering and we look forward to having you back on the show. It's great to be here, thanks. Absolutely, and for my co-host John Troyer, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE's continuing coverage, day three of VMworld 2017. Stick around, we'll be right back.